Okay, this video we're going to cover section um, 11.5. And so in this section and some of the others, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, and I don't think that I did, which is why I'm making it a point to mention it now at least, is um, when you open an assignment, you do see this these boxes, you know, you've got all the problems here to show you your score. You've got the due date there, right, which is our final due date. If you read the announcements from um, January 25th, the email that was sent out in Canvas, um, it does describe the difference between um, your final deadline and then your uh, your weekly deadlines. OK, so the idea is, is I'm not trying to require everyone to get 100 um, as they're learning the material. Um, but as long as you get in there and you're doing more than half of it, which I put the marker at 60%, um, then I would I would say that you're participating um, enough for that week, okay? I'm not saying you need to sit there and keep pounding at it until you get to the 100%. Um, that you can do at a later time whenever you have more time, okay? Um, if you do happen to be able to knock it out and get hundreds right away, well then yay, that's perfect. That's less you have to do at a later point in time, right? Um, but every week you do need to come in and watch the lecture videos. And then um, we'll look at the slides first because all the formulas and everything that I talk about is gonna be in those slides. And then come into these example formula, uh, example videos and then watch these examples, okay? But one thing I wanted to point out, okay? Aside from the process of how everything works, is that this, this description box right here. And not many people think, I wouldn't even have thought, I didn't realize that my messages were hidden, okay? So I did give you guys hints on a lot of different sections, and this will come in handy, especially when we get more involved in the higher um, level stuff, um, in like chapter 13, 14, 15, all of those guys. Um, but definitely helpful while we're learning the basics right now um is to click on this drop down arrow in the description because if you notice i do give you hints for some of the more trickier problems okay um the web assign explanations may not be enough to understand what they're doing or why they're doing it um so i do try to give you these these example videos and then at the same time i try to give you some hints in there as to what's going on, okay? So there is a hint for number eight, and then there's another hint for um, numbers 11 and 12, which are very similar. Now these hints can be found in some of the other um, homework assignments, 11.1, 2, 3, 4. Um, I just don't think that it's in all of them because of some of the problems are pretty straightforward following from the slides, whereas some of them are a little bit more complicated, okay? And in this section is definitely one of them. The biggest issue that I'm gonna have with this section is um, the part that kind of mind boggles people. <laughs> if you're talking about a particular um, line, right? I'm gonna draw on this paper. If I'm talking about a line, we know that they go in both directions, right? But when you talk about um, something that's in the direction of a particular vector, you know that it's only in going in one direction or the other, okay? So it's either going in this direction or it's going in that direction, depending on what the direction of the vector is, okay? However, if you do use a vector to describe your direction, notice that any parallel and I do mean any, any parallel vector to V is also a directional vector because all parallel vectors will have that same direction. It's just that the other vector, the parallel vector may be longer or it may be shorter. Okay, because by definition, in order for two vectors to be parallel, um, one has to be a constant multiplier to the other. Okay, I just use W just to come up with another letter. Okay, um, so make sure that you keep that in mind because a lot of times when we find our directional vectors, 
in the homework itself and just in general in calculus, if you get fractions or decimals or square roots or anything weird, they usually use a parallel vector that would look much sim um, simpler instead of the actual vector that you get through the calculation, okay? And that will come into play um, in a couple of problems that you're gonna see here today, okay? So just keep that in mind. If I do change the directional vector, um, it's because of this fact, okay? So let's go ahead and let me kind of just box this off to the side. We won't use that piece of paper anymore. Um, and I'm gonna start with number one. So for number one, it's just asking me to determine whether each point lies on the line. And the line that they gave me is in its um, parametric form. So negative one plus T and then Y is six T and Z is three plus T. And so essentially what you do is you use one coordinate to solve for T. Then you plug that T value into the other two coordinates or the other two variables. And then you see if you get the coordinates that they've given you, okay? So I know that's kind of weird to say out loud. It doesn't really, you know, come out the way I intended. Um, but for instance, it's telling me that X equals zero <coughs> for part A, Y equals six, and excuse me, my mouth got dry a little bit and z equal to four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the first one and then just see if the others correspond, okay? So since I know that x is equivalent to this and now you're telling me x is equivalent to that, that must mean that negative one plus t equals zero. Since x is equivalent to both of them, they should certainly be equivalent to each other, right? So then if I solve for t here, I get that t would equal positive one. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this T value into Y and into Z in the parameter, I cannot say that word, <laughs> the parameterization form for Y and Z and see if I do in fact get six and four. Okay, now you probably already see it, but I'm going to write this out. So six times this T value is in fact six, right? And three plus that T value is in fact four. So then for part A, I'm going to come over here to WebAssign and select yes, okay? Now let's see what happens if we get a no. Now I don't know for sure that B is gonna be a no, but we'll find out. So here they're saying that X is equal to one, Y is equal to two, and Z is equal to three. Um, and so I'm using this point for part B. Now, if I go to the first one, that means that negative one plus T should equal one, which actually tells me um, that T would equal two. So now if I go back to the top and I plug in two for T here and two for T here, I need to make sure that I'm getting these values. But six times two is 12, not another two. And three plus two is five, not three. So these do not out, which means my response for B is going to be no. Okay, part C, we have X is equal to negative three, Y is equal to negative 12, and Z is equal to one. So this means negative one plus T should equal negative three, which means T should equal negative two. So again, I'm gonna plug these in. Six times negative two is a negative 12. So that one checks out, but the other one must check out as well. Um, three plus a negative two is a positive one. So this one checks out as well. So we ended up with yes, no, yes, okay. Okay, and I'm just gonna submit my answer just so I can get clarification real quick before I keep going. Um, Yes and no and yes. Okay, great. So for number two, let's see what they're asking for. They say find sets of parametric equations and symmetric equations of the line that passes through the given point and is parallel to the given vector or line. Okay. 
Um, what that means is that that's going to be that direction vector, right? B is that direction vector. Um, when you have a direction vector, you're going to come up with the directional, the direction numbers, okay? And that's the part that I was mentioning at the beginning of the lecture is that even though you have a directional vector, um, you can use any other vector that's parallel to it. So those directional numbers that you end up grabbing, the A, B, and C, they may not be the exact same values as the vector, okay? If the vector values, the vector components are not simple. Um, so that hasn't happened yet here because six, one, and four is pretty simple, right? There's no fractions, there's no um, radicals that I would have to rationalize or anything weird going on with these guys, decimals, just regular whole numbers. And they're already all reduced. They don't even have a common factor, okay? So as long as it doesn't have a common factor, then you don't need to manipulate those um, directional vector components, which means if I don't need to do that, then that means that my uh, directional numbers are going to come exactly from this directional vector. So that means that this guy is A, this guy is B, and this guy is C. Okay. Um, and so if we want to come up with the parametric equations, remember it's going to be x equals x1 plus at, x1 being the point. And so the point was a zero. So zero plus 6t, which is just 6t. Then y is going to be y1 plus bt. And again, the point is zero, zero, zero. So the y coordinate is zero plus 1t, which is just t. And then z is going to be z1 plus ct. z1 is also 0. And 4t, which is just 4t. So for this answer here, it wants me to separate them using a comma. I'm going to say x equals 6t, comma, y equals t, comma, z equals 4t. Then for the symmetric equations, essentially what you're doing is solving each of those three equations for t. And then since they all equal t, they should all equal each other, right? Um, so if I take the top one and I solve for t, I'm just going to divide by 6 and I get x over 6 equals t. If I move on to the second equation, it already says that y equals t. You don't need to solve for t. And then the last equation, z equals 4t, I would have to divide by 4. So z over 4 equals t. So if all of these things are equal to t, then all of these things should be equivalent to each other. OK? And that's where you find the symmetrical equations from. And so let's see, do I have that as an option? I do. The last um, item on that list is, is, the, is the one, right? Okay, let's just go ahead and submit this one just to be sure, right? Um, boom, boom, boom. And yes, that both checks. Okay, great. So moving on. Um, now that we're working on number three, I'm going to need to switch my pages over. Let me pull this down a little bit and we'll work with number three now. Okay. So for number three, Oops, I went a little bit too far on my screen. This one says, um, find the sets of parametric equations um, of the line that passes through the given point and it's parallel to the other point. So this one is, is um, they didn't give me V in its component form, right? Um, they kind of gave me some symmetrical, another equation, right? Um, in its symmetric equations format. And so what I've got to do is I've got to pick that apart so that I can figure out what those um, vector components are, the A, B, and C, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these pieces of the symmetrical equations and I'm going to solve for the variables x, y, and z.
And then I'll show you a pattern, okay? So if I multiply by two, I get X minus one equals two T um, or X equals two um, T plus one. Here, if I multiply by negative four, I get Y plus one equals negative four T. And then I get negative four T minus one. Here, I don't need to multiply by anything, but I do need to add four. So I get Z equals T plus four. So remember, A is the number in front of T, B is the number in front of T, and then C is the number in front of T, okay? So that tells me that my vector, my directional vector is gonna be two, negative four, and one, okay? And those do not have a common factor, so I don't have to worry about that parallel lines business that I talked about at the beginning. Um, this is already as simple as it's gonna get, so I can use these as my directional numbers um, A, B, and C, okay? So I have found the A, B, and C that we needed. And since it's parallel, I can use these guys. I don't have to find something perpendicular or anything like that, okay? Um, so if they want the parametric equations to this other point, negative two, three, five, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say X minus negative two, or no, I'm sorry, x equals negative two plus a t. So x equals negative two plus a t. Y equals um, three plus b t. And b is actually a negative four, so I'm gonna put minus four t. And then z is, five plus one T or just T, okay? So there's the A, the B and the C. And then these are the X coordinates, Y coordinates and Z coordinate of the point they gave us, okay? And so this is what I would type into part A. And then for part B, if we solve all of these for T, I would get X plus two divided by positive two. I would get y minus three divided by negative four. And then I would get z minus five equal to t. So x plus two over two, y minus three over negative four, and z minus five. And let's see if that is an option on this screen. So x plus two over two seems to be the top one and the middle third one. Then y minus three over negative four seems to be the top one and z minus five matches. So it's gotta be this top one here. And in part A, I'm actually going to type in um, these parametric equations that we got. So x equals negative two plus two t comma, y equals three minus four t comma z equals five plus t and that looks good um there is a comma in there just cannot see it or maybe there isn't so let me double check yeah there is or there was so let me submit and make sure we have a green light before we keep going um da, da, da. okay yay we got two green lights okay perfect so we're gonna move on to number four now in number four is where that that funny business about um about those parallel vectors is going to come into place this is the first time i think it's going to happen so it says, find sets of parametric equations and symmetric equations of the line that passes through the two points. Um, and then for each line, write the directional vectors as integers. So they are giving you a clue there that you might have to manipulate those um, vectors, okay? Those directional numbers. So in order for me to figure it out, it's just like a regular, um, vector, right? If you have two points in space and you want to find the direction from one 
point to the other, that's the directional vector, okay? So you definitely wanna find that directional vector. So if I wanna find V, I'm just calling it V, I wanna basically find PQ. So I'm gonna take the second coordinate and subtract it from the first coordinate. Then the second coordinate again, subtracted from the first point's second coordinate. And then finally, the third coordinate minus the value in the first point. So let's see what I get here. I'm gonna use my calculator just cause I'm not, I'm faster at fractions on the calculator. Although I can do them, it's just, sometimes I get lazy with the fractions and that's okay. That would be plus. So two fifths plus five is 27 over five. And then that's plus, so I get three, okay? And so this is the values that um, we end up with, but it does tell me that it wants me to use integers and not these things, okay? So what that means is normally what you wanna do is you always wanna have, um, No, I'm not going to say that. You just don't want to have fractions. So I know that V equals this, but I can also use another vector, which is some constant multiple times V. And what constant would be convenient here to get rid of those fractions? That constant for here, for this particular situation, would be a 5, right? And if I multiplied all three components by a 5, the five would cancel for the first component, five would cancel for the second component, and then for the third component, it would turn into 15, okay? And now these are all integers, and so I can use these as my directional numbers. So that guy will become the A, the B, and then the C, okay? And then normally, usually choose P, which is the first point, to start putting this um, also, Notice that there's no fractions in any of this. So you probably want to use the point that doesn't have fractions, okay? So I get X equal to the X coordinate minus 17T. For Y, I get the Y coordinate negative five plus 27T. And then for Z, I get the Z coordinate plus 15T. And so that's what I would type in for the parametric equations part, which I'll do afterward. But if I wanna have the symmetric equations, then I need to solve each of these for T. So I'm gonna minus three and divide by negative 17. Here, I'm gonna add five and then divide by 27. And then here I'm going to add two and divide by positive 15. And so I get X minus three over negative 17, Y plus five over 27, and Z plus two over 15. Now, if you notice though, there's no negatives at the bottom on any of my options, okay? So what that tells me, I do see some 17s at the bottom, right? The first, third, and last option all have 17 at the bottom. Um, and then the second option and the last option both have the 27 and then both also have the 15. And it looks like just based on the information I have, um, it should be, it should be this one, right? You got, um, Y plus five, Z plus two, 27 and 15. This is the only option that has those two correct. And so we can take their word for it that the other one is correct. But if you're on your own and you're trying to do this, um, you definitely wanna know how and why is that equivalent to what you have, right? And it is. So remember that you can write this as um, negative one times 17. And then instead of writing uh, one over negative one, right? Like if I peel this out of the fraction, you can swap this and just write negative one times X minus three over 17, and then choose to distribute that one to the top. So you get negative X plus three over a positive 17. 
And then that can be written as positive three minus X over 17, which is exactly what they have on the far left side of that triple or equation, okay? So there's three sides in this equation thing here, okay? Um, another quick way besides going through all of these steps as to why it can happen, basically, if you just take this negative and distribute it to the top, you'll jump straight to this step. And then if you just recognize that those are the same signs, it is equivalent to what you have, okay? So let me go ahead and type in my parametric equations that I had at the beginning. Hopefully I don't make any typos. That is my biggest hang up with these problems is I do make typos. So I try my best not to, but it's usually not because <laughs> my math is wrong, but because I either wrote something down wrong or I typed it in wrong the nemesis of everyone, right? <laughs> okay. There it goes. I was like, did I submit? Mm, yes and yes, we got those right, yay. Okay, moving on. Number five. So for number five, For number five, um, this one says, find the sets of parametric equations and symmetric equations of the line that passes through the two points. So very similarly, like this one, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. It's the exact same process, okay? However, I may or may not need to use um, those uh, directional vectors. I, I need to... This one's tricky, okay? Because you will end up with integers, but they're just not like the simplest integers that you can end up with, if that makes any sense. Okay, so for me, in order for me to find V, I'm gonna do P and Q. So I'm going to do 24 minus zero, 24 minus zero, and then zero minus 64, okay? So when I do that, I end up with 24, 24, and negative 64 as my directional vector. Now, I can use a parallel vector, and these can all be reduced by something. So I think 64, can that be divided by 12? No. 64, can it be divided by 24? No. Um, but I think they can all be divided by eight. So let me try that first. So instead of using V, I'm gonna actually use one eighth of V. Remember I said any constant times this vector is parallel. So um, if I take one eighth, that'll become three, three and negative eight. I should have known that, okay. And so these are the A, B, and C that we're going to use. So not only can you multiply by a whole number to get rid of fractions, but you can also multiply by fractions to reduce those directional numbers, okay? They have their conveniences both directions. Alrighty then. So it wants me to give them the parametric equations. So remember, I'm using the first coordinate. So X equals zero plus 3t, y equals 0 plus 3t, and z equals 64 minus 8t. So I'm going to type in x equal to 3t, comma y equal to 3t, comma z equal to 64 minus 8t. And then if I want the parametric equations, I do not need to minus anything over because it's just 0. So I'm gonna divide by three. Same thing here, I don't need to minus it over. I just need to divide by three. Here I do need to minus the 64 and then eventually divide by the eight. So the symmetric equations I end up with um, do look like this. Oops, that should look like a three. It's kind of funny. Okay, um, so does that match anything we've got here? Why did I put this negative? It should not be negative not negative there, it should not be negative here. 
Um, I think that is the top one or the second one, actually. The top one doesn't have any fractions. Um, but yeah, that seems to be the one. Um, yeah, those were not my coordinates, so this has to be it. Let's double check. So I think it accepted my response. Um, number five, double checks. Yay. Okay. So now we're going to move on to number six. And number six says, find a set of parametric equations of the line with the given characteristics. It says, use T for the parameter. Enter your answers as a comma separated list of equations. So they don't ask me for the symmetric equations in this one. They're just asking me for the parametric equations. And this one's actually pretty easy because they already gave me the point and they gave me V. The only thing is, is that because my point is in, has three coordinates, I know I'm in three dimensional space, which means that vector should have three components to be in three dimensional space, okay? And right now the first component, which is the I is a positive nine and the J component, which is negative one will have negative one, but there's no K component given in this vector. So you do have to put a third component. And since there's no Ks there, it would have to be a zero component, okay? So remember three, three um, coordinates in a point does automatically imply uh, space, which means your vector should also have three components, okay? So now that I know this, these don't have anything in common. There's no fractions or anything like that. So I can use this as my A, this is my B, and this is my C. And so when I write my parametric equations, it's just going to be X equals the X coordinate plus this A value, the Y coordinate, and then B value times T, and then the Z coordinate um and then no t's right zero t's so this is not even there okay so when i type in my answers we're going to type in x equals negative one plus nine t y equals four minus and instead of writing one t i'm just going to put t and then z equal to negative nine um let's check it just to be sure I think I can fit number seven on my paper. Mm, okay, let's see. Yeah, we've got a green check. Okay, great. Now, number seven, um, this, is, this is nice. This one's not so bad. Um, they give me the line X plus two Y minus four Z minus one equal to zero. And they're essentially asking us if these three separate points are points on that line, okay? So this one has a direction, right? A direction vector, but it could be anything parallel. Now, remember when you're talking about parallel, those constants that you're multiplying by can be negative. And doesn't that make it go in the opposite direction? And we know that lines can go this direction and then the opposite direction as well, okay? So they, you can use negatives we don't usually use them, but you can. Um, but I need to know whether or not these points are on that particular line, okay? So essentially all you're doing is plugging in the X coordinate for X, the Y coordinate for Y, the Z coordinate for Z, and then seeing if you get zero after you compute everything. So for part A, I'm gonna be plugging in negative five for X. I'm gonna be plugging in one for Y and negative one for Z. And I wanna see if I actually do get zero. So negative five plus two plus four minus one, that is actually six minus six, which is zero. So for the first one, I will say yes. Okay, now for part B, um, X is now positive five. Uh, y is now positive two, z is positive two. So we get five plus four minus eight minus one. That's nine minus nine, which is zero. So for part B, I'm gonna say yes as well. 
And then finally, the last one, x is negative four, y is one, and z is negative one. So I get negative four plus two plus four minus one. That gives me one, which is not the same as zero, right? So C is a no-go. And let's check, always check. Yeah, I'm gonna need another paper for the next few problems. Yes, three checks, awesome. Okay, for number eight. Um, okay. Here it says, find an equation to the plane with the given characteristics. The plane passes through those two points and is perpendicular to this plane here that they've given us, okay? Um, so the first thing we need to do is, um, if you read my hint up here, for number eight, it says the normal vector through the plane that passes through the two points given, I'll call this plane P, is the cross product of the direction vector P of P and the normal vector of the equation of the perpendicular plane, since the cross product will result, the cross product result will be orthogonal to both planes. So essentially what is going on? because even that I'm reading it now and I'm like what <laughs> so I don't blame you if you're, you're in that same mentality um <laughs> I'm just being straightforward so um essentially what happens is is in order for me to find this equation that's passing through these two points I need to know a normal vector between those two points okay now what that means is I have to find a vector between those two points and then I have to find a vector that's perpendicular to that okay and the one that's perpendicular to that is going to be the normal vector that I need to give them the equation that they're asking for okay so I need that normal vector now this other plane it's already a perpendicular plane okay so um <clears throat> I know that they're perpendicular to one another and I know what his normal vector looks like, but that does not necessarily mean that his normal vector is going to be the same as my normal vector, even though the two vectors are um, the two, the plane going through those two points is perpendicular to this other plane that they've given me, okay? So in order to ensure, right? In order for me to ensure that the normal vector for the plane given to me is normal or whatever is, is uh, perpendicular to the normal plane for this other, um, these two points, okay? So there's a plane going through those two points and then there's this other plane that you already know about that you're given. Um, both of those, or I need to find one that is perpendicular to the two points, okay? The plane that's going through the two points. So in order to ensure that, they basically tell us, um, or we should remember from the previous section, that when you take a cross product, um, that result is automatically going to be um, perpendicular to both of the vectors that you crossed, okay? Which is fine, because I'm really only caring if it is perpendicular to the vector between um, the two points but it's just kind of a little bonus that it's also perpendicular to the plane that's given, okay? Um, so that's the game plan. And I tried to explain that as best and as short as I could in the little paragraph. But essentially what I wanna do is I wanna find a vector that goes between those two points, figure out what the normal vector is for that plane that's given, and then do a cross product between the two so that I know that that result is certainly perpendicular to the plane going through the two points. And then that means that that's my normal vector. And once I have that normal vector, I know what the A, B, and C are to set up the whole um, equation, okay? So sorry about all of that. I just had to get it like a little bit elaborate real, real quick. So the first thing I wanna do is find out what PQ is. 
And so to do that, I'm going to do three minus three, one minus four, and negative seven minus one. And so that tells me that I get zero, negative three, and negative eight. Now I do know that the normal vector for the plane that was given to me, since it already gave it to me in the equation, I know that the coefficient of X, the coefficient of Y, and the coefficient of Z is that normal vector, okay? The problem is, is I need to find the normal vector to the plane of, between the two points, okay? I don't care that this is normal to any points that lie on this plane, I need it to be normal to the line between the two points I was given, okay? So in order for me to guarantee that I'm using a normal vector to those two points over here, I'm going to have to cross product these. So I'm going to do I, J, K, and I'm gonna put the P components and then the N components and we'll go through this. Now I'm gonna put it in component form. So I get negative six minus, actually plus 64, and then zero minus actually plus 48, and then zero minus actually plus 18. So I get hmm, negative, I can't think right now, 58. That would just be a negative 48. And then this would be an 18, okay? And so now I know that this one is normal to PQ. It's actually normal to both, the PQ from the plane through the two points and normal to the normal vector to the other plane that was given, okay? But I just needed it to be normal to PQ before I could continue, okay? So that means this is gonna be the A, the B and the C that we use to write the equation, okay? And so how do we write that equation? We're gonna use this formula, A times X minus X1 plus B times Y minus Y1 plus C, Z minus Z1. And then that should be equal to zero, okay? So the coordinates, I always pick P, I always pick the first point that was given. So A is 58 and I'm gonna do X minus three. B is a negative 48 and I'm gonna do Y minus four. And then C is a positive 18, Z minus one. So I'm only using the first point coordinates, okay? Equal to zero. Um, but normally when you write the equation of a plane, it should look, it should have this form, okay? So you just have the coefficient X, coefficient Y, coefficient Z, and then a constant on the other side. So I do need to manipulate this just a little bit. So first thing I'm gonna do is distribute that 58 and then distribute that 48. and then distribute that 18. And so I get 58X minus 48Y plus 18Z. And then the constant I get is, um, hmm, is zero. So I really don't need to write this in my equation. It just so happens to be zero. Um, it doesn't always come out that way but for some reason in this one, it did. So how about that? Okay, let me make sure that I did that. Okay, let's try it and see if it's right. And if it's not, then we'll figure out what we did wrong. But I'm thinking it's gonna be good. So I wasn't expecting it to zero out. That's why I'm a little hesitant. Um, okay, let's try it and see what it says. That one was number eight. That one was the hard one. Ah, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Normally it doesn't zero out. It was coincidence. I just was worried that maybe I had done something wrong, but no, we're good. We did it all right. Okay, perfect. 
Okay, then moving on to number nine. So number nine um, says determine whether the planes are parallel, orthogonal, or neither. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the normal vector for the first plane, and that can be found by doing the A, the B, and then the C, right? All the coefficients of X, Y, and Z uh, correspondingly. So then the normal vector for the second equation would be one, two, and five. And if I want to know if these two planes are parallel, I, or parallel means that n1 would have to equal some constant times n2. But notice, if I multiply by 7, if I multiply n2 by 7, I'll get the first component. But if I multiply 2 by 7, I don't get this. And if I multiply 5 by 7, I don't get that. So there's definitely not a, a constant for all three that will work to get me um, so that they're parallel, OK? So this relationship is not happening with these two vectors, which means they are not parallel. Now we have to remember about orthogonal. Remember, in order for it to be orthogonal, the dot product would have to equal 0. So we're going to go ahead and find the dot product between these two vectors. So first components multiplied plus second components multiplied plus third components multiplied. And I get 7 minus 12 plus 10. Um, and I get 5, which is not equal to 0. So this means that they are not orthogonal. And if they're not parallel and they're not orthogonal, then that's going to mean that they're neither. OK, if you do get 0 here, then you would say that they are orthogonal. OK, um, but mine are neither. And if you do end up getting orthogonal, well, remember what orthogonal means. It just means they're perpendicular, right? And if they're perpendicular, what's the angle between them? It's 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, OK? But in this case, I did not get orthogonal. So I can't just say that the angle between them is automatically 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So I have to actually follow the formula. Again, in the slides, this formula is given. Um, but I do need to do this um, computation. So remember the symbols, right? The double bars mean the magnitude, and then the single bars means the absolute value. So I've already done the dot product, actually. We figured out that it was 5, and the absolute value of 5 is just 5, right? But for the magnitude of n1, that means um, I'm going to square that, which is 49, plus the square of this is 36, plus the square of that is 1. So I get the square root of 86. And then for the magnitude of this one, the square of 1 is 1, the square of 2 is 4, and the square of 5 is 25. So I get 30. So I have, um, actually, let me simplify those as much as I can, because this thing might reduce. It might not. I don't know. Square root of 86, oops, square root of 86 does not reduce, and square root of 30 does not reduce. So I'm going to do the square root of 86 times 30. And I get 2580. So let's see if the square root of that will reduce. It might not in this calculator. It's not. I'm going to try to type it in the calculator. I know that does reduce because I'm pretty sure 4 goes into it. Yeah, it does. So I know that this can reduce. I know it can. But just to avoid having to do more work than we need to do, I'm just going to type it in there the way it is. Oh, no, I don't even need to type it in there. I'm trying to find the angle, right? So I don't even care what that value is. It's going to be a decimal in my calculator. What I want to know is what theta equals. So I have to do the cosine inverse of this number. Make that an 8 and a 0. So I'm going to do cosine inverse of 5 over the square root of 2580. And I'm going to close that parentheses. Now my calculator is in degree mode. But notice that there's no degree symbol in here. 
So I'm going to change my mode to radians because radians doesn't have like a symbol that you need to use. So now that it's in radian mode, I'm going to hit enter and I get, um, it says, if the answer does not exist, enter in D and E, but it doesn't tell me what to round to either. Hmm. I am confused about that one. Let me see real quick. Okay, I'm just gonna try to type in because it normally it'll tell you to round but if it doesn't tell you to round, it's because they want an exact answer. Um, but I'm not getting an exact answer. I'm getting this decimal. So I don't know if it will accept that. Oh, nope, see, it's saying no, I'm incorrect. So something must have happened. Um, Oh, I see. And you probably watched the whole video and was like, no, no, ma'am. <laughs> I made a mistake right here. When I did my um, dot product, I did seven times one and I got seven, negative six times two and I got negative 12. And you were probably wondering where the heck did I get 10 from? I don't know. <laughs> but it should have been one times five, which is five. And then, so at least you have an idea of what to do in case it's not zero. But in this case, this sum would have come out to equal zero. And then because it did come out to equal zero, that implies that the two guys are actually orthogonal. And we already know if they're orthogonal, then the angle is going to be 90 degrees or pi over two. So that's I mean, at least you have the formula, <laughs> but totally not the correct answer. My, I'm so sorry. So let me see, fraction, and I'm going to put um, a pi in the top and a two at the bottom. And now let's try and hopefully that's it, right? Um, oopsie. I swear you make any little tiny thing, right? And the whole thing's gone out the window. Get the big red X's, right? Okay. <laughs> so let's keep going. I think we're almost done. I think there's like 12 or 13 problems in this section. So we're getting our way there. Now for number 10, it's just asking us to sketch the graph of this plane. And this one is super easy to do. Um, all you do is take turns on which variable is not zero. Okay. So if you want to find out what the X coordinate or one of the coordinates on the X plane, then you essentially keep the X, but you convert the Y to zero and the six, I mean, I'm sorry, the Z to zero. And so you end up with the equation three X equals 54, which means X equals 18. So the point you get is 18 for X and the zero you plugged in for Y and the zero you plugged in for Z. Now we're gonna change it and we're gonna try to solve for Y. So the X will become zero, Y stays Y, and Z will become zero. What you're left with is three Y equal to 54. So you get Y is also 18. So you get zero for X, 18 for Y, and zero for Z. Finally, we're gonna let X equal zero, let Y equal zero, and solve for Z. And so then we get six Z equal to 54. And we get z equal to nine, I believe, but I always got to double check because my brain does weird things. So zero for x, zero for y, and six. So when you're drawing this, you're basically going to go to the value eight on the x uh, axes. You're going to go to 18 on the y axis, and then you're going to go to six on the z axis, and then just connect the dots, and that draws a triangle for the plane. Now, the plane does extend beyond this one quadrant. We draw these lines just so we can see the plane in this one particular um, um, octave of the whole thing, because there's four um, quadrants. So this is one of, or I'm sorry, there's eight quadrants in three-dimensional space. So this is one of those octants, the, the 
one of the eight quadrants. It's not quadrant because quadrant is four, <laughs> but it's an octant. <laughs> Um, but when you do a cut, you know, Y going positive, negative, X going forward and backward, and the other one going left and right, it does create those eight regions. So there are octants in this, um, in this plane. And you're just basically drawing the plane in that one octant. It does extend and it does extend this direction. It's just like a big plate, a sheet of metal um, that has no end to its length. But normally when we draw them, we draw them just in one octave. So um, it definitely cannot be. Um, oh, I made an error. Hello, 54. I said it, but then I wrote down the wrong number. Um, 54 divided by six is nine. So this should actually be a coordinate of nine. And that explains why they're all real close to 10. So it looks like all the Z coordinates are where they're supposed to be, but both the X and the Y are supposed to be at 18. And it looks like this is the one that has the coordinates both at 18, the X and the Y. So here, the X intercept was 18 comma zero comma zero, Y intercept was zero comma 18 comma zero, and then the Z intercept was nine. Is that right? Yes, that looks right. So let's check. Problem's not too bad, right? Sometimes you don't even need to write that you're plugging in the zeros. You just make those disappear and solve for x to get the um, x-intercept, then make the other two variables zero and just solve. So normally I don't write this. I just write the 3y equals 5, 4, 54. And then I don't write that. I just write the 6z equals 54, okay? Oh, yay. Check marks, check marks are always good. Okay. So, um, oh, there's more. There's, well, I'll only go to 14, but it does look like you have um, some extra problems there. Okay. So let's see what we get here. Now, number 11 tells us to. Find the distance between the point and the plane, okay? And so there is a um, formula that you will need to use to find the distance between the point and a plane. Um, the only thing is that you do need to know the normal vector for, um, well, you need to have two vectors, okay? So you need to have a directional vector and then the normal vector from the plane that's given, okay? So this is the way I approach it. I told you to go vice versa in the notes, um, but the way I do it is the point that's given, I let that one be Q. And then if I wanna find P, I usually find a point that's on the plane. And so normally the easiest way is to find one of those intercepts. So I'm gonna let X equal zero, Y equal to zero, and then I get Z. Well, it would just be Z equals 14. So Z is going to be 14. If Z had a coefficient in front of it, then I would divide by that coefficient to figure out this um, point value. Okay. So I want to find the vector PQ. So I'm basically going to be doing um, Q minus zero or zero minus zero, zero minus zero, and then zero minus 14. And so I get that. My normal vector from the plane that was given is going to be A, B, and C, okay? And then um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distance formula, which again is in the lecture slide, but it does tell me if I find this dot product and then I divide by the magnitude of n, okay? So that means I'm gonna do zero times two, which is zero, zero times seven, which is zero, negative 14 times one, which is negative 14. And then for n, I'm gonna end up with four, 49 plus one. So I get the absolute value of negative 14 over the square root of 54. 
which is positive 14 over the square root of 54. Now, I don't think the square root of 54 reduces. It does, but notice that three is not gonna reduce to 14. So I'm just gonna type in this as my answer. And let's hope that we are correct. Fifty-four. And again, I tried to explain how to do that in the thing, but the words sometimes just go right over our heads, right? Um, I try to use the correct vocabulary, but sometimes it's just too overwhelming, period. Um, so this one's very, very similar. They're literally the same product problem. It's just this one had the point zero, zero, zero. And this one actually has different coordinates, okay? But the process is exactly the same. So you'll let Q equal the point that's given. Let P be a point on that plane. So if I make X zero and Y zero, I will end up with two Z equal to eight, which means that the Z coordinate would be four, okay? And then I also know my normal vector is one, negative one and two. My PQ vector is going to be three minus zero, two minus zero, and then one minus four. Two minus zero is two. One minus four is negative three. So my distance is going to be um, P dot with N, PQ dot with N. So that's three plus negative two plus negative six. And then one plus one plus four. So I do get the absolute value of negative five, which is five over the square root of six. So let's try in here. This one does say round up three decimal places. So five over square root of six is actually 2.041, okay? So 2.041. And let's go check our answer. Yes, and we got it correct. So yay. Okay, so for number 13, it's asking me to verify that the two planes are parallel and then find the distance between the, parent, the planes. Okay, so that's not too bad because we do have the normal vectors for each one. So the normal vector for the first plane is actually going to be three. Notice that y is missing, so the coefficient would be zero and then negative five. And then for the second one, um, we have three, zero again, because there's no y's and then negative five. Not only are they parallel, but they're actually the exact same, right? They're the same length and the same direction, okay? Um, so yes, they are actually parallel. Now, if this was a six and a negative 10, then obviously they're, they're multiples of each other and therefore still parallel, even though they might not be exactly equivalent, okay? But one does need to be a multiple of the other, whether it be a whole number multiple or a fraction multiple, but does have to be a multiple of the other, okay? Um, and if they want me to find the distance between the two planes, we literally are just doing the distance formula, but with N1 and N2 and then N2 at the bottom, okay? So whatever vector you put in this spot, that's the vector that has to go down here. So basically I'm doing this, N1 dot N2 over the magnitude of N2 making sure that we follow that, um, that rule or that theorem correctly. So I'm going to dot product these, which means three times three is nine, zero times zero, and negative five times negative five. And at the bottom, I'm gonna get nine plus zero plus 25. So I get 34 over the square root of 34, which is, just 34 over the square root of 34. Now, if I rationalize that 34 over the square root of 34, 
you just get the square root of 34, okay? So I typed it in the calculator and the calculator rationalizes it for me. And it's just square root of 34. So it wants me to round to three decimal places. So I'm gonna hit my double arrow and that's 5.831. So in here, I'm gonna type in 5.831. And we'll moment of truth, right? Check it to make sure that it's good. If not, we'll look back at what we've got. Oh, nope, that one said wrong. So let me go verify. Okay, I did figure out where I got this wrong. I should still be using this formula. But in order for me to use that formula, I should be using points on each of the two um, vectors. So number 13 just completely or whatever I just did. This is not it. Now the beginning of it was correct. N1 was three, zero, negative five. N2 was three, zero, and negative five. And again, because they're equivalent or even if they were multiples of one another, they would um, be parallel, right? But that's not what they're asking. So that is what they're asking. That's what they're also asking is to find the distance between the two points, okay? And so what we want to do is we want to find a point on the first plane. So if I let, um, let's say, um, x equals zero and y equals zero, then z would be uh, negative one in the case of the first plane. And then for Q, if I let um, well, X equals zero, or Y equals zero, actually I wanna let Z equals zero for this one. So we'll let Y equals zero and Z equals zero, but then I will end up with three X equal to three, which means X equals one. So I do have two points on the plane. So for each plane, so we'll find PQ. PQ is going to be one minus zero, zero minus zero, and then zero um, minus the negative one. So we actually get one, zero, and one, okay? And so then this vector is what we're going to use in that distance formula. So we're going to do the dot product of this vector with the normal vector, and since it's the same for both, we're going to put three, zero, negative five. And then at the bottom, we're going to do the magnitude of one of those normal vectors. It doesn't matter which one. Um, so let's see, we're going to get three plus zero plus a negative five over the magnitude of, so it's going to be nine plus zero plus 25. That is the square root of 34, but we get negative two or just two over the square root of 34. So let me type that in my calculator. And so the number I end up with is actually 0.343. So let's see if that is what they want, which I think is what they want. Because if the other one didn't work, that one should work. But let's find out when the truth. Yes, it did. Okay. So ignore whatever I did the first time. I did number 13. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you do it this way. Okay. Okay, so finally, we're at number 14, which is the last one that I will go over because 15 um, and 16 are both uh, video questions. So you watch the video and then you'll answer the corresponding questions. But for this problem, it says find the distance between the point and the line given by the parametric equations, okay? And so for that one, there is a different formula, okay? So I'm gonna write that down. That distance formula is actually going to be the magnitude of PQ crossed with um, B over 
um, the magnitude of just V. Okay. And V being the directional vector of the line that they gave us, right? So the line that they gave us is in its parametric form. And so we already know that V can be found by those coefficients of T. So V is actually going to be 2, 1, and 2. Okay. Now always let the point that's been given be Q. So my Q will be 7, negative 5, and 1. And then P will be a point on the plane, okay? And so since you are given the parametric equations, you can just basically take any T value and plug it in and get the point that's on that line, okay? But um, just for convenient purposes, I'm gonna let T equal zero. Um, so when I let T equal zero, the X coordinate would be zero, the Y coordinate would be negative three, and then the Z coordinate would be two. Again, all I'm doing is plugging in zero for T in each of these equations, okay? So plugging in zero for T and getting those corresponding point that is on that line, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna find PQ and PQ is going to be um, seven minus zero, negative five minus negative three and one minus two. So I get seven, negative two, and negative one, okay? And then now we already have these, so let's go ahead and figure out what that cross product is gonna be. So I have seven, negative two, negative one, two, one, two. So I'm gonna cover that up. I get negative four minus plus one, um, 14 minus, actually plus two, and then seven minus actually plus four. So we get negative three, negative 16, and 11. Okay, and so then what am I gonna do with that? I need to do the magnitude of that over the magnitude of B. So the square root of nine plus 16 squared. 256 plus 121 over the magnitude of V, which is 4 plus 1 plus 4. 9 plus 256 plus 121, oops, I missed a digit, is 386 over 9. Let me see if 386 can reduce by 9. It does not. And 386 does not reduce at all. Um, and it does want me to round this to the near to three decimal places. So let me see. Square root of 386 over the square root of um, nine. Well, square root of nine is three. So we get 6.549. So I'm gonna try that, 6.549. And hopefully that's good. And I didn't make a boo like I did on number 13. Um, there were a couple of problems I had with little errors, but 13 was way wrong um, the first time I did it. Second time I did it, it was much better, right? Um, I don't know why my brain went in that direction, but it did the first time. So here we go. Now we have number 14. So I hope that this helps. I know this stuff is starting to get a little confusing. Um, it does not get any less confusing. It, it, it just keeps going and keeps building and building and building and piling those blocks on top of one another until we get to the very end, okay? So all this normal vector stuff and, and, and doing all these little tiny pieces is just gonna be like one part in a bigger problem, okay? So um, we definitely need to get the definitions down. We definitely need to get the mechanics of how to find normal vectors, what a normal vector is, what orthogonal means, you know, all those particular pieces, okay? Because um, they will keep coming up as we get to the later chapters, okay? Um, the course does kind of shift a little bit in the middle. Um, we could be doing one topic and then another and then a totally different one, but essentially everything's gonna all come back at the end, okay? So definitely don't forget these little pieces that you're working on in this section. Okay, so other than that, you guys have a good day. I hope you had a great week. I need to get the uh, assignment.
assignments done and you are good to go.